No, Kazoo, we're glad to have you here, man. How's it been so far? Great. Yeah, cartoonists don't usually get to do this. That's true. You're usually behind the scenes. This is, yeah, I'm usually hiding out somewhere in the back, so. It's going to be different not using your hands on this. A different. <laughs> all right, well, we got a few questions to ask you, and I'm sure all of you guys out there want to know some of this stuff. Now, i got to ask you, it's kind of, it's a big deal getting to do the cover art for the books, especially redoing them after they've been out, and you've got the fans out there who know the stories inside and out, know everything about it. What was your reaction when Scholastic, hey, we want you to do this? How did you react? Well, when I was initially asked to do it, I actually, um, I was really hesitant because I, I liked the original covers so much that I didn't feel that um, anybody should touch them. <laughs> and, but but when, I, when I thought about it, I realized it had been a while and the readers of uh, my book series, The Amulet, were actually too young to have read the books back when they came out. And I realized, oh, hey, this is a, this is a great opportunity to introduce the books to a new generation of readers. Because um, it's been with us for so long, and um, and so then I, you know, submitted uh, some copies of, of what I what I would do, and they they chose them. And um, i to be honest, yeah, when when I was told I got it, I, I did just quietly in my chair, just go, yeah, did a little, yes, yes, and then I was like, in your oh, face, oh man, that's a this is gonna be a lot of responsibility. <laughs> so I quickly like, went from being yeah to oh no. And uh, everyone's gonna hate me. Uh, you guys love I... the rights? <laughs> exact opposite. Now I gotta ask you. Now we're talking about those. Where did you, where did you get the inspiration for that? Like, you're talking about the fans and how the books have already been there. It's gotta be a huge responsibility to come up with different inspirations for each of those books. How did you choose the cover that you chose? All right. So here's a crazy story. I um, I actually got sick and I was in a coma around the time they made the selection for the uh, the cover the cover art um, and I was recovering and I had uh, I had short-term memory loss you know so if I read something I would just forget it but my long-term memory stayed with me and I still remembered having read the books and the books had an indelible um, indelible impression on me just as it has on all the generation of readers that have read it um, and those memories were strong enough that I just remembered a few moments, a few key moments from the book, and that's what I ended up illustrating. Um, so luckily, my long-term memory didn't go away. And oh, did you get your phone call before or after the coma? <laughs> oh, no, that was afterwards, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. Yeah, I was asked to submit, I was asked to submit the sketches uh, before, and then I came out of the hospital and I forgot everything, and I was just... <laughs> I, did, I had to teach myself to draw again. I had to teach how to, myself how to walk. I couldn't even remember what shoes I was wearing. So you, or what, you worked what, on these afterwards, after you retire yourself? Yeah, I was, I was actually working on these while I was uh, recovering um, from, from the, uh, the event. But I've never actually, gone through any of that, and I can't draw like that. <laughs> but, uh, but the That's drawing impressive. skills didn't go away. The, all the long-term stuff still st stayed with me, and the editors and everybody were really great at you know, um, helping me with any of the details if I had them wrong, but I didn't actually get too many details wrong. And so, you know, it actually ended up being kind of a, a good thing that, that I had to rely on, on, that, on that strong, I had to key in on those strong emotional Specific memories moments. that I had that had just been buried in my brain so deep that I wouldn't forget them. And so, um, as an author, as an illustrator, I always feel like my job is actually to to uh, illustrate and to tell stories um, that become memories. So this became a perfect uh, exercise to do something like that, to create new memories That's from old ones. Now you were, you were saying earlier that you were worried when, I mean you were excited when you found out, but then you were also yeah. worried about the reaction when you redid the covers. How's the fan response been to it so far? Oh, the fan response has been uh, so positive. I, I'm just, I'm really, uh, I'm really lucky. Well, I'm lucky because the fan base <laughs> is so great. You know, I'm, I'm working, I'm working with um, a fan base that is so accepting and so they're so excited about uh, about Harry Potter and the world. I, I just, I felt like, um, you know, everyone sort of brought me into the fold very quickly, and I felt at home. Now. Did you feel any certain pressure when working on the covers that focus on the story, or were you influenced more by the the popularity of Harry Potter? I tried to to stay away from a lot of the the, the popular interpretations of um, 
of the series. Those aren't going to leave our minds. I know everyone had those uh, in, in, at the back of their minds. Um, because I, was, I had this feeling that I was supposed to introduce the books to readers who had never read the books before. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think that there's some people who haven't read them, you know? But when they're... But my, the readers of my books... I can show of hands. <laughs> uh, who's read the books? <laughs> Who hasn't? Who hasn't read the book? <laughs> yeah, so I, I sort of, I saw it as a, a way to introduce these adventures to new readers, and especially to the young readers who were um, just starting to read, learn, learning to read through the books that I normally do. Uh, I knew that it would, it takes a lot to get someone to be interested in a series, and it's, it's, it's going to take more than somebody just saying, hey, that's a good book. Right. And so I wanted to show um, a snapshot, like a window, uh, of the world uh, that they'd be experiencing. And I, I figured it, didn't, it doesn't matter if you know the stories or not, you could look at that and go, that looks interesting, I want to dive into that world. And that's the way I ended up, um, that's the approach that I took when I illustrated the covers. No, oh, I mean, it, it definitely translates. I gotta know, how many of you guys out there read the book for the first time with these new covers, with the re-release? Anybody? You guys read it all from the beginning. <laughs> they just came out. <laughs> Did you guys go back and get the re-release? Hey. There you go, guys. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, Kazu, that's all the time we've got right now. Um, it's been great having you. Now, I hear you're going to be around the expo, am I right? Doing some yeah. signings? Oh, yeah. I'll be at the event, and I'll be signing, uh, signing at the table, I think. Excellent. Great. I think so. We look forward to seeing you there, Kazu. Thanks for coming out yeah, here, man. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more me. time for Kazoo Kiburishi. Yeah.